Today, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about uh, 3D printing and how I decided to get into 3D printing and as a way to help uh, improve my reloading process. Uh, gist of it is, I decided to go ahead and pick up a 3D printer, print up a case feeder, and I'm in the process of printing and building a bullet collator, and once that's complete, I'll do a brass collator as well that I will tie to my bullet or uh, uh, case feeder. Anyway, let's head downstairs. I'll show you what I've uh, built, what I've printed, and uh, we'll walk you through what I've done and go from there. Basically, I kind of wanted to speed up my reloading process, and I'm cheap. I didn't want to spend what would have been $800 on a case feeder, a bullet collator, and a case collator. So, bought a bunch of parts. Um, and I'm into it for a hell of a lot less than that by the time I'm all done, including all the electronics required to make uh, the collators work. So, uh, here's the deal. This is uh, a case feeder that I found the plans for on Thingverse, which is you know, a repository where people can design uh, things that you can print. And it's anything from little uh, toy dinosaurs and vases to useful things like a case feeder. So the way this thing works, um, currently it's got a uh, plastic tube um, and you can go ahead and drop down your cases ahead of time. You can adjust the size of the case that you're using. So this one is set up on pistol 9mm to 45. It'll feed up to uh, 30-06 and 8mm. Um, it's got options for 223 and 357 as well. So, you've got some options there. You find the one that's going to fit the best. Um, it's got a little shuttle that drops it, and this part um, slides along my Hornady. Uh, this is a piece that comes on the Hornady, this little metal piece, but this foot, this pusher, uh, is something that I printed and feeds it in there. So, let's just show you how this works real quick, um, and we will uh, we'll go from there. First thing, let's just grab a couple of the brass. So since this is not a collator uh, right now, although it will be, that's the plan, I'm just going to feed these into the tube just to show you how this works. And I won't actually be doing a full reloading. So there are, what, half a dozen of those in there. Alright, so that's in there. Let's bring this in a little bit closer and uh, show you how this works. All right, so if you watch the shuttle, as you pull this lever up, the shuttle's gonna follow this track and move on up. This part of the shuttle, it's gonna go ahead and engage um, this little traveler, if you wanna call it that. There is a ball bearing back here, or I'm sorry, uh, just a bearing back here, but that's gonna engage this shuttle. And you can see this moving forward. It's going to drop a piece of brass down this hole and land right on this shell. So that just dropped down. So now I've got brass here. This returns back and the next piece of brass falls into this hole. So as I come on down, this pusher pushes that brass right into my uh, shell plate. And it works perfect. Now, I did modify this slightly. Um, I wanted more tension. The design here had a screw and it didn't have this bolt and washer, or this nut and washer here. Uh, I added that so that I can adjust the tension on this uh, independently of the length. So you use the screw length, it screws into here, to dictate how far this thing will push forward. And then I have the spring here so that if it gets jammed, I don't break stuff. So this thing can kind of float a little bit. Okay, so anyway, that's that. And then you can see it's got this groove here. And there's a bearing inside here that travels in that groove. Come on up, bring our next one in. And I'm not doing a full upstroke. I don't, I've got my, uh, there's no, I don't want to actually resize anything. So. Anyway, a little bit of tuning needs to happen when you get this thing set up. But overall, this works really well. So, that's how that thing works. It's 
pretty fantastic. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's real easy to do, and I can send you. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the file so that if you want to do this, you can uh, download it as well. All right. So that's how that case feeder works. Um, easy to 3D print. I want to say it took me uh, three or four days to print out all the pieces. Uh, it's not constant printing, but it just takes some time. These things do take a while to, to print. Um, this, uh, this piece right here probably took seven, eight hours to print. So you get an idea of how, how that works. Anyway, let's head upstairs. I'll show you the printer, show you what I've got going on next, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is my 3D printer. Uh, it's a Creality uh, Ender 3 version 2. Uh, I want to say they're 225, 250 bucks. Uh, pretty cheap. Um, all said and done. We have a spool of filament up here. These things come, they're about two pounds, about one kilogram. Um, and the, the case feeder that I printed used maybe a, a quarter or less of one of these spools. So they don't take too much. Um, spool costs 20 to 30 bucks, so, you know, case feeder with bearings and all the parts, you know, costs $10 to make. Not a big deal. Uh, what's printing here, this is going to be a bucket, essentially, for a collator. This first one that I'm doing, uh, I'm going to set it up for uh, bullets. I'm going to eventually do a second one for brass, so I'll have two of these. Um, it's the exact same design. This is not my design. This is someone else's. Um, I'll send a link with some, or put up a link with some information on it. Um, but just want to stress, this is not my design. I'm taking the files and printing them. Um, this is like it's a it's a Lego kit for adults. Okay, you got to print out your parts, your plastic parts, put them together, get your motors, um, your electronics, do a little bit of soldering, get it all to work. Not a big deal. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you can modify things as you go if you want. I've done a few of that, a little bit of that, but uh, I'll build this and then go from there. So this piece um, is probably going to end up being about this tall, and it's going to take two and a half days. It's been going on for about a day right now. So this base is solid, and it, eh, I can't say solid. It's got about a 30% infill, but it's just a flat base, and... Uh, it, that part took quite a while to print. Now it's just building the walls, building them up. Um, so you set these things up, set them to print. I've got it here in my office, so it's just working, or you know, printing as I'm working. So no big deal there. Um, but pretty cool, pretty straightforward, um, pretty easy to do. Uh, let's uh, bring the computer over and let me just show you real quick how this kind of works and give you an idea. All right, so what we're gonna do is we'll just open up the instructions that come with uh, this case feeder, um, the, or I'm sorry, with the uh, uh, collator. The case feeder doesn't have instructions, but in this case, uh, you just open up your instructions and it tells you what parts you're gonna print. For this, um, specifically, there are more parts than you need because it gives you options for picking your motor or picking your sensor types. Um, basically, read through all these before you do anything. So, and it even gives you a list of all the parts that you need to purchase. Um, it gives you settings for each of the parts when you print them. So, um, I've already printed that whole section. So when I go here, what I'm gonna do is make find my mount. Um, I'm going to use a post mount and that tells me C and D, so I need to go find these. In my file that I've downloaded, I've got a mounts folder. What I'll do is open up the ones that I want, post base and this post, and I'll bring them into a slicer. Um, I'm using Cura. Uh, there's a couple out there, but this is a free program, um, probably a good thing to use. Um, so I'd say just use this. Okay, so now that I've got two parts in here, what you have to do is actually set it up so that they, they print. Um, I'm gonna see if I can figure out how I want to orient these. So the way I want this oriented, as you begin to uh, figure this out, you, you learn that you want to minimize the 
supports that are being used that are required um, because you're not able to just print in midair okay so you can see this part I'm minimizing supports by laying it flat on that edge now over here this section is probably going to need some supports but I can it'll figure that out on its own and uh, that'll work pretty easily uh, this one I'm just going to go ahead and lay it down on this back edge so this seems like a good place to put it. Select the face. I want that face. And then let's go ahead and move it so that I'm not in the way of anything. And let's go ahead and rotate it. So this grid is basically a representation of my print bed and you just arrange the parts how you want them to be okay so next thing that you're going to do is follow the directions for um, infill and layer height um, so what i'm going to do this is going to support all the weight you can adjust all this stuff so infill they said they wanted 30 percent and four walls okay so i'm going to go ahead and do that I've got the 0.2 layer height, which is already there. I got four walls that's taken care of. And infill, um, they want 30 and they want 30. So we're good there. So I have all these taken care of. You can change the patterns. I've been using this uh, gyroid pattern. It works pretty well. So this is all taken care of. Um, I've set my filament type. I'm using PETG. As you get into this, you'll figure out what you're using and why. But everything's set so now I just hit slice it slices it and then I save it to a file load it onto an SD card put that into my printer and tell it to print so this will be the next thing that I end up building so if any of you are interested in it it's a pretty straightforward process to get started in this 3d printing um, like I said I decided to do it because it was cheaper to do uh, than it was to go buy the new parts and I enjoy this stuff um, my kids have liked it because just as part of practice, I've been printing off little toys for them and they absolutely love it. So, uh, real easy. Um, the, the, the cost to get started is pretty cheap. Uh, once you're all in, you know, with a bunch of miscellaneous screws and springs and parts to put things together, the printer itself, a couple spools of filament, I mean, and that's honestly all you really need right there. You're into this for under 300 bucks. Um, Sure, it's 300 bucks, but the reality is it's fairly cheap and it's pretty useful. Um, so hopefully that works. Uh, if it's piqued your interest, take a look. There's tons of videos on it. Uh, get you tons of information and um, hopefully someone found this thing useful. Take care.